and welcome to Crazy Sock Lady podcast channel. My name is Kay and you are joining me here for episode 67. Today is Thursday, April 25th and today we have a couple of socks to talk about, of course, and I also am going to chat about my cozy memories blanket. It's been a while since we've talked about any scrappy blankets here on the podcast. So I thought it would be fun to bring out my cozy memories so we can chat about it a bit today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. And we do have a group for the podcast on Ravelry. If you head over and search on the groups tab, you're going to just put in crazy sock lady podcast and it should pull the group up. That's where you're going to find information about knit alongs, giveaways, swapless swaps. There's always something fun going on over there. So if you haven't joined us, head over and do that. If you don't want to search any of these places, all you have to do is look right down here in the down bar here on YouTube and you're going to find links to everywhere that you can find me as well as show notes for this episode. A couple of announcements for the Ravelry group. We did have the third annual Selfish Cow come to a close the end of March and I do have a video up that is announcing the prize winners for that knit along. Almost all of the winners have contacted me and all of the physical prizes have been mailed out, but there are still a couple of winners for patterns that have not gotten in touch with me. So if you participated in the third annual Selfish Cow, you haven't watched that video yet, head over and do that and see if you're one of those winners that needs to get in touch with me and let me know which pattern you want so that I can get that sent out to you. And right now we will have one swapless swap that is open. I wanna show you the last one that I received and talk a bit about those if you've never heard of them before, if you're new. Um, so the swapless swaps are, you get fingering weight yarn. There's a different yarn dyer each month. The last one um, that I've received is by Eternity Ranch Knits. And what you get are 10 40 yard mini skeins of fingering weight yarn. The price does vary depending on where they are shipping to. So it's 35 to $45. And this, like I said, is Eternity Ranch yarns and they come in a bag with all of your minis. They have the yarn dyers information, um, colorway names, all of that listed. And let's just talk a minute about how gorgeous these are. Look at that one right there. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm excited to use these. I've never used Eternity Ranch yarns before, so I'm really excited about getting to try that out. So the one we have open right now, the yarn dyer is Yarn Matrix. And when I checked this morning, we only had 14 spots left. So the money is due for this May 15th. So if you wanna head over and snag one of those 14 spots, you can go ahead and do that. Just make sure that you have your money paid by May 15th and all the information on how to sign up, how to pay, all of that's gonna be in the thread. I'll put a link directly down below that'll take you right over there. So we do have a giveaway winner to announce and that is for the shawl cuff that I shared last episode by The Rusted Stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the winner right here at the bottom of the screen. I'll put the YouTube name because this was a YouTube giveaway with the comments from last episode. So thank you so much to everybody that entered. And I know so many of you commented on Instagram um, that you guys headed over and purchased one of these and I hope you love it. I adore the one that she sent me to try out. So I'm excited for the winner to receive this. I haven't picked the winner yet. That's why I'm not saying <laughs> the name. I wrote down to do that before I started and then forgot to grab my computer and bring it in here. So it'll be right here at the bottom of the screen. So if you are the winner, congratulations. And just send me an email. My email is down below in the down bar. Just send me an email with your full name and your mailing address so that I can get this shipped out to you as soon as possible. So I only have one finished object to share with you guys today. I have been doing so much design knitting with things that I can't share or just don't, I'm not ready to share yet. Um, but I do have a DK weight shawl out to testers right now. Fabulous, amazing testers. Um, so I'm excited about that and so excited to get that out to you guys, but it will not be until probably mid end of the summer. I'm giving them a while cause it is a big DK weight shawl, but I'm very excited about it. So I have that out. I have a couple of sock projects going, um, that are designs, a cowl, 
So there's gonna be so much coming within the next couple of months leading up into fall, and I cannot wait to share all of the exciting things with you guys. So make sure that you're following me on Instagram. That's where most of the updates will happen more regularly than the podcasts. <laughs> so make sure that if you want to keep up to date with everything going on, you head over and follow me over on Instagram if you aren't already. But now for what I do have to show today, I have one finished pair of socks for Wyatt. <laughs> so I showed these last week as a work in progress, or not last week, but last episode is a work in progress. So these socks were out of the Toe Footsies yarn, and I did them on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle, and I cast on 60 stitches for these. If you've watched for a while, you know that I normally do 56 stitches for Wyatt, but this yarn is a bit thinner, so I decided to do 60 to kind of make up for that. Um, and then I did just what I normally do with slip stitch heel flap, gusset, and the contrasting color is toe footsies as well. And he'll be excited to get these. I already have the yarn in the project bag to start his next pair of socks. I just haven't gotten around to that. I finished these probably almost a week ago and just haven't had a chance to cast on another pair for him. So I better get on the ball and get those started. <laughs> but the next thing that I'll show with you guys, and I did I say I did these on a US 1 2.25 millimeter Chalgoon needle. The next thing is a work in progress that you saw last week as well, and it's still a work in progress. So this is in a bag by Daisy Girl and Company. And these are socks that I am working up two at a time. And I've gotten a good bit done on these. I'm on the foot and the gusset decreases are done. So the yarn that I'm using is by Adelaide Cottage. And this is on her Golden Twinkle Base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Gold Toned Stellina in her Autumn in Rhinebeck colorway from a couple of years ago, the year before last, I believe. So here's the progress so far. Look how pretty that yarn is. I don't know that you guys can see the Stellina, but it's gorgeous. So like I said, the gusset decreases are done. I did do my normal slip stitch heel flap and gusset two at a time. So what I did, I kept them both on this needle. I worked the heel flap and the turn on the first sock picked up half the gusset decreases that would lead me over to the second sock, did the same thing, heel flap, turn, half the gusset stitches, then worked across the front, this is probably so confusing, picked up the second half of the gusset decreases and just worked across and got back to going two at a time um, for the gusset decreases. So it wasn't, I. That is possibly my first time ever doing a slip stitch heel flap and gusset two at a time, I think. I think I've always done like fish lips kiss or something like that when I've done two at a time socks or an afterthought heel. Um, I don't think I've ever done a heel flap and gusset, but it wasn't anything that was hard. It just took some thought to make sure I was getting everything done in the correct direction in the way it needed to be done, but it definitely wasn't anything that was difficult. So I'm still really enjoying doing socks two at a time. I'm finding it just so much fun. I don't know why. I go back and forth so much. You'll know this if you have watched for a while. Sometimes I just cannot get enough of double pointed needles. Then I'll go to Magic Loop for a while and then I'll go back to double pointed needles. I just bounce around to what's bringing me joy at that moment. And I think that keeps it fresh and interesting for me, it keeps me from getting burnt out on knitting socks. I don't know that I would ever get burnt out, but sometimes just switching up that method is all that I need to really keep my sock mojo 
going like it does because as you guys know I knit a ton of socks <laughs> and I think that that really that works for me and that keeps that momentum going and keeps me wanting to knit them um so yeah right now two at a time magic loop I'm loving doing especially my vanilla socks I haven't really done any patterned socks like that um but for vanilla knitting that's what I'm really finding joy in right now and those socks, I did have them 64 stitches, which is my normal for me. And it's on US1 2.25 millimeter needle. And it's a Chowgu 40 inch. That's what I use for two at a time. And I think I have another 40 inch Chowgu in that size. So why it's next pair of socks, I may go ahead and cast on two at a time. We'll see. I'm probably going to work on getting this done first and then start Wyatt's and my neighbor Stephanie has requested a pair of pink socks so I'm probably gonna go hunting I think I have some knit picks um she said like pink purple girly collars so I'm gonna go I think I have some knit picks um Felici that has girly collars so I need to go look and see if I have that so all right now let's talk about my cozy memories blanket I have not talked about a scrappy blanket for a little while on the podcast. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see on Sundays that I do hashtag scrappy Sunday to work on any scrappy projects that I want on Sunday. I try to set aside Sundays for that only. But even doing that, I feel like sometimes I don't get enough work done. With my blankets, I realize they are long-term projects. Most blankets are, but especially scrappy blankets. They're just long-term projects. And I realize that, but I'm itching to actually see a bit more progress. And now that I'm getting more progress done on my Cozy Memories, I'm itching to get it done. To get more progress, I felt like I needed to work on it more than just on Sundays. It has been exclusively what I've been working on on Sundays for maybe the past two Sundays. Um, but I'm trying to do even more than that. So this past week I challenged myself to do one square a day. That's been my morning knitting. So I'm a early riser and I sit down with my cup of coffee in the morning and do a little bit of knitting before I get my boys up to get them ready for school. So I typically have, depending on how fast I get out of bed and have my breakfast and my coffee. I typically have anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes of knitting time. And I did time myself because this is shockingly one of the probably the most often asked question about my cozy memories is how long does it take me to knit a square? So I timed myself and it takes me about 23 minutes to knit a square. It's kind of the average I've discovered after timing myself a couple of times. So 30 to 45 minutes is plenty of time to get at least one square done. So I've been doing one square during my morning knitting time. And so I've seen a little bit more growth in it. And now it's got me motivated to keep that momentum going of getting one square added a day and then adding depending on how much time I have on Sundays. Some Sundays I get six squares in some Sundays I only get like three. So <laughs> I've been trying to make that my Sunday project and a square a day. I'm loving it right now. I'm enjoying that momentum. So I'm going to keep going with it while it's still enjoyable. When I get burnt out, it might get put aside and then picked back up later. But that's where we're at for now. So I'm going to stand up and show you guys the blanket. How big it is. It's pretty big. And another question I get asked is how big am I going to make it? I do kind of have a general idea, but I, we'll see how big it ends up being. Right now I feel like it's not done. It's not quite the size that I want it to be. So here's where, and it is massive. I'm gonna drop it, okay. So it's very big. Um, yeah, that's it. The end of it is touching the floor <laughs> and I'm five, five and a half. So 
it's a pretty big blanket. I still have some ends to weave in that I've not been good about keeping up with. So the pattern that I followed for mine is the Coziest Memory by Kemper Ray. And the only thing that I have done differently is I do 40 stitches. So it's a 20 by 20 because you cast on 20 stitches for half the square, 20 for the other half that you do. Um, and then you decrease down. So I did 40 stitches was my cast on. And I'm trying to think. And then I also, and this is in the notes in my project page, which I'll be sure to link below for you guys. The first stitch of the row, I knit through the back loop. And then the last stitch of the row, I slip with the yarn in front. That creates just a neater edge. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it creates a neater edge that almost looks like a chain stitch when you are crocheting. So it creates that neater edge so that it's easier to pick up your stitches along the edges of the square. And I think those are the only two changes that I really made to the pattern. Um, I do have, let me find the center here. So I have the center marked with the Progress Keeper from Amber of Maker's Haven. And I have been going out. So you can see that's my center and the squares are, those are the decreases. So these were worked this way, that way, that way, and that way. I hope you guys can see that. So they're all, it's like four sections facing different ways. So right now I have one section done and it actually has 117 squares. So that's kind of my goal. Each section will have 117 squares, which seems like such an insane amount of squares. Um, but yeah, and once I get, I only have one section with that many squares. I'm working on finishing up the second section right now. I think I have like 20 more squares or no. 10 more maybe, 10 to 20 more. I can't remember from I looked this morning to see how many more I needed to do in that section. But I have 10 to 20 more in that and then the other ones I have a good bit left to do in there. So it'll get there. I'm enjoying the kind of momentum I have going with it now of one square a day. It's just making me, I mean one square a day isn't a ton of progress but it's more progress than I was getting just working a square or two or you know however many on a Sunday so I'm really enjoying making that my priority right now I just think it would be so exciting to actually have a scrappy blanket finished <laughs> so I wanted to make sure to share that with you guys today let me double check my notes here I should probably tell you guys what needles I use and stuff huh let me grab the basket because they're down inside so I've been keeping it in this basket that I found at the restaurant where my knit group meets. It's called Neaters. Um, so they have this big basket and my blanket had outgrown the basket it was in. So I picked this up and it fits perfect. So let's just take the whole blanket out. So in here I have a couple of things. So this has notions, the patterns down in there. Um, We'll kind of go through that in a second. Maybe you guys would enjoy seeing that. But then down in here I have mini skeins. So these, I went through and wound a bunch of actual mini skeins that I had into balls. These um, Amber of Yarn Hoarder sent me and they're already wrapped around clothespins and ready to go. So that was super exciting. I didn't have to wind those. And then I also have a bag of minis that have already been added to the blanket. So all these are already in there. So now I will go through if they're big enough that I can wind some off and save them for swaps with friends or something like that, then I will do that. If they're not enough to really send off to a friend, then I will put them aside to make a magic knot ball for my crochet corner to corner. 
that's kind of my process. I add it to my cozy memories first, whether it's from a project I finished or a mini that a friend has sent me. It goes in cozy memories and then leftovers get set aside to be put into the crochet blanket unless there's a good bit left and then I make a mini to do a mini swap with friends or gift to friends or something like that. So that's kind of my yarn inside of there. Now my notions. I have these, I ordered these cute bags from Amazon. They are bumpkins. You can see the tag. Bumpkins brand. It came in like a pack of three. So I don't know. I thought they were super cute. And in here I have all of my notions and things that I could probably take out of here that I don't really need. <laughs> so I have the pattern in here. Coziest Memory by Kimber Ray, just in case I need a refresher of the pattern. Then I also, okay, don't laugh at me. I'm a bit crazy about things sometimes. And I made this. <laughs> so I marked out how many squares I needed per section. Like I said, 117 squares. And then when I go through and finish a square, I mark off the square. This just helps me know because I don't, I made the mistake like it's end up larger, ending up larger than I had originally wanted it to be because I did not have a set plan going forward and I was not paying attention to how many I was adding per section. So then I had, I ended up adding more to the section that's finished than I had kind of wanted. So then I thought, well, every section I want to be the same size that's going out from that center point. So now they all have to be 117 squares. I just want them all to be the same size. So it's going to be pretty big. It'll probably fit on my king size bed. Possibly we'll see when it's done. But I have a stitch marker on each section on the blanket so that I know, okay, this section going this way is, for example, the waffle marker. It's a waffle. I have a peppermint bark one, a peppermint cupcake one, a Starbucks Frappuccino one. So there's a marker in each section and that's how I know where I am and then I can mark off the squ a square as I finish it. So this is just working for me to keep me, I realize that might be a little crazy. Some people are just like, I'm going to knit it just as big as I want and not really pay much attention, but I decided this will work for me so that I don't end up, because I was just not paying attention and added too many squares and I wasn't going to rip them out. So this is keeping me on track. So I have that in there and then I have some stitch markers in here. Nothing too crazy. Oops, don't drop them. Just some light bulb markers and a ring marker to mark the center point on the square so I know where the decreases go. I have some Haya Haya snips. You always have to have those. I have a couple of sets of needles. So these are the needles that I was using. These are Knitter's Pride Carbons. I love the Carbons DPNs. So I have a set of those still in there. That's what I was using before I purchased signatures. So I purchased these at Maryland Sheep and Wool and it's a US 2.5 millimeter. Love them, they're purple, they're gorgeous. So those are kind of my special treat to myself when we were in Maryland for my blanket. I think that's really pretty much it. The rest of this can probably be cleaned out. I have in here a bag that has some floss bobbins and I was using these and I still use them occasionally if I have just like a tiny bit of yarn left because I will save it and add it to my um, corner to corner. I will just wrap it around that bobbin and stick it down in the bag of you know yarns to be made into a magic knot ball. And then I have a little zipper pouch that I think it has a bunch more stitch markers in there. Yep. Just a bunch of, actually these are progress keepers. 
<laughs> I'm dumping stuff all over the floor. Um, bunch of progress keepers in here if I want to mark squares for any reason. And that's pretty much it that's in there. So I keep all of this in my bag. The only thing I don't have in here is a needle to weave in the ends. So obviously I have not woven in ends in a while. So that's my notions pouch for my cozy memories. And I think that's pretty much all of the knitting today. I do have something to share with you guys that I got in the mail just yesterday it came. So I received a package from Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns. I'm getting her card out here to show you. It has a cute owl on it. And I'll be sure to link her shop down below. And she sent me three skeins of yarn, a couple for a giveaway and then one to keep for myself. So the first one is a semi-solid and this colorway is New Growth. And this is on her 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 463 yards, 100 grams. And she sent me a couple of her self-striping. So this one is Winter Sunrise. And same base, 75, 25, 463 yards. Look how pretty that is. It's called Sunrise, and it kind of reminds me of a pencil. <laughs> like the yellow, the pink for the eraser, and then the gray for like the silver under the eraser. So yes, Winter Sunrise is the color we name for that one. And then Meadow. Is the color for this one. So I think let's go ahead and do a giveaway for one of these and then I'll put the other one aside for a knit along or something in the future. I am going to keep this one because I think I love semi solids for designs so I think maybe a fun summery design with a new growth um, would be kind of fun. But let's go ahead and do a giveaway for one of these just comment down below this video. Let me know if you win, which one you would like, Winter Sunrise or Meadow. These are both self-striping sock yarn. So let me know which one of these you would like if you win. And next episode, we will draw a winner and then it will be whichever one you commented you wanted, that one will be yours. And then, like I said, we'll put the other one aside for a future knit along or something like that. Speaking of, we have no knit alongs going on right now. I was thinking about that and thinking, what knit along should we do next? So if you guys have any ideas of knit alongs you would like to see, comment those down below um, and let me know. You can put them in the same comment if you're entering to win one of these. So let me know down below. Actually, let's, okay. Because that could get confusing. Maybe you comment about what knit along you want to do but you don't want to win one of these make sure if you want to win one of these you put which one you want in the comments and that will be your entry for this if you comment about a knit along you would like to see in the future but you don't put which color way of these you would like to win then that will not enter you to win so you can put both in the same comment but make sure if you're entering for this you put the name i hope that makes sense and I will be sure to link her shop down below. And she did so generously offer us a coupon code whoops, for you guys to go do some shopping. So 15% off is what you are going to get if you use the coupon code CRAZYSOCKLADY15. And like I said, I will link her shop down below so you can head over and take a look. Oh, I should probably tell you when that ends. That is good through May 31st. So you have all of this month, well, the rest of this month, there's not much left and next month to go do some shopping. So head over and check her out to give her some love. Gorgeous colorways. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do a sock design with this. Maybe something with like leafy. That'd be pretty. All right, so I think that is it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode, enjoyed hearing a little bit about the cozy memories. I know I always get asked so many questions, so I thought it'd be fun to sit down and chat with you guys about it for a minute. And hopefully that momentum will keep going and maybe I'll have a finished cozy memories sometime soon. <laughs>
<laughs> so make sure to let me know what knit alongs you want to see in the future and which colorway you would be interested in winning from Mint Rain Yarns. And I will see you guys again next episode. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.